So, some interesting news. Last night, Elegoo posted this on their website, an update notice on the Centauri series of 3D printers. And what this is, is an announcement that they have released the source code. So this is going to cover the Centauri Carbon. They also posted a little update on multicolor printing, basically saying that they're working on that. So that's not as big an update, but the release of the source code is because this potentially could open up a lot of activity in the community, basically in just you know, custom firmware or specialized updates and who knows what could happen with this. So let's go out and look at what they posted. So here is the repository and it says that, look, this 3D printer system utilizes the all winner R528 chip integrating a DSP unit and an MCU. So there's already five issues up. And again, this has only been out since like last night or yesterday. And several of these have been put up by the uh, the Dev Miner TV. And let's see what this is. The web UI source code and its back end are missing. There's a license missing and build instructions are missing. So it looks like um, maybe everything is not quite out there. So they point out they don't have a license. This would affect, you know, not making people aware of what license covers this stuff, what's proprietary, what's, you know, open, things like that. It makes it difficult for people to reuse this code. And it does look like people have already started looking through this and have identified that, yes, they are using some of Clipper's code in here. So Elegoo, whenever the Centauri Carbon was first released, was very upfront saying uh, this is not Clipper. Clipper used uh, SOC with system on a chip and an MCU, so like a Raspberry Pi plus a MCU microcontroller system, whereas the Centauri, right, they're saying is only one chip, and so it couldn't run Clipper. So it is not compatible with open source Clipper commands or plugins, right? Um, people very quickly were like, that does not appear to be the case. And I can't find anything on Elegoo's website anymore saying that it's not Clipper, but I could have sworn way back they actually even had it in a fact on the website. Um, now I can only find references to it in articles like this one on, this is a uh, hackster IO on their review of it, basically showing, yeah, Elegoo saying it wasn't Clipper. So now that they've released source code, people can go through it and people have identified, yeah, um, this is Clipper in here. You know, if you go into this K config file, it says main menu Clipper firmware configuration. So come in, you search the code base for Clipper and it shows up 246 times. So pretty definitive. Yeah, they actually took Clipper and reused it, which, you know, part of the reason maybe they, they did post the source is because they kind of had to because of the licensing behind Clipper kind of forced their hand on this. And some people... Uh, did, I believe, reach out and contact them and let them know, hey, you may be in violation of the license of the software you're using if you don't release the source code uh, underneath your printers. So yeah, there's tons of stuff in here, um, even references to clipper3d.org. And yeah, just it's it's all through here. There's It's, it's Clipper. Now, that doesn't mean that it's only Clipper. It's obviously not base Clipper. They've had to modify lots of stuff, but it's certainly Clipper. You know, also people pointing out the build instructions are missing, and so that makes it somewhat difficult to know how to actually build this firmware. So there's also apparently a private key that's required that's that's locked up somewhere. So I don't think that you can actually maybe flash firmware even if you could build any. Now, beyond that, I mean, I think this is a positive step and Certainly, this is more than, you know, you're going to get from maybe Bamboo Lab or something like that, where they are completely locked down and maybe are still using some open source stuff under the hood. Who knows? But having the source code available does open up the potential in the future for things like custom tuning of maybe the motor drivers and other facets of the hardware to improve maybe your print quality or tune out ringing and things like that, that maybe you can't just quite accomplish completely in software or in tuning print profiles and things like that. There are things that maybe you need access to the firmware to fix or certain features that right now are broken in the user interface. And even if the interface code isn't quite available yet, maybe that will become available. 
Or maybe somebody will be able to fork this thing and figure out what the hooks are to make just bear clipper run on this thing. And then all of a sudden it opens up everything that you could maybe run different plugins and stuff that are available on Clipper for this type of printer. And I think really, you know, the Elegoo Centauri Carbon being so cheap makes it a great hacking platform with this source code available because people can get into it really cheap. If you break the thing for a lot of people, that's not maybe the end of the world because, you know, I mean, it's 300 bucks and that's not nothing, but, uh, Hacking on something that cost a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars is a much different proposition than hacking on something that cost a few hundred bucks. Because again, if you brick it, it's not maybe the end of the world. Um, so for something like this, I think this is a really positive step. I think hopefully in the future you might start seeing a lot of things developed on this platform because of having access to source code that it, it just going to open up a lot of things. So uh, I think this is great. I'm interested to see where it goes and see what kind of features come out of this. Um, you know, I'm sure before too long, you'll see forks and people working on this once people figure out how to flash and build custom firmware for this platform. You know, it'll be exceptionally interesting to see what happens with the Open Centauri project because they've been working a lot on these printers already and figuring out how they run and what's underneath the hood. And this is one of the places where I originally had found out, no, this is very much running Clipper under the hood somewhere in some fashion. Uh, they've got a GitHub out there and they've been working on flashing stuff already. So um, it, it will be interesting to see how this you know, affects this project and people have already shown an interest in, you know, cracking this printer open and working on it. And so now with that source code available, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that's probably going to come out of this. So anyway, just wanted to point that out for anybody that saw my review and may have hung around, was still interested in seeing what was going on. Uh, I'm not super involved in this. I don't have the technical capability, but yeah, really interesting, positive step going forward. Got any comments, feedback, suggestions, as always, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.